Hi, welcome to Expressions. I'm Julie Robbins. We're at Casa Bonita of all places, and uh, we're going to see the talent of Dustin here, who is a twister, a balloonologist, a balloon artist, a balloon guy. You'll see what we're talking about here in just a minute as you see him do his magic right now. Uh, this isn't going to pop, is it? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Stay tuned for Expressions. We'll be right back. Today is Dustin Rudel Huber. Did I get that right? Yes. Oh, yes! And you are a balloon artist. Mm -hmm. And we might, might want to mention we're at Casa Bonita and you do some uh, things for them here. First of all, um, before we discuss the hat you're wearing, um, <laughs> let's talk about how you actually got into this because this is very unusual and you're very good at this, as our viewers will see here in a minute. What, what got your interest in doing the balloon animals and that sort of thing? Well, several years back, I started out with juggling, just something I saw around, enjoyed it quite a bit, and it started escalating. I picked up magic and fire eating and breathing, and I wanted to do more children's parties, so I decided to start doing balloons. So you're not into the desk job then, right? No. Not? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and um, tell me, now you, you do the things pretty quickly, right? I mean, you practice at that or? Oh, I've had about four years experience and I just try to get them down as quickly as possible. Okay, and this is something that you've just worked on by yourself or is there a school for this or classes for this sort of thing? Or? There's a few scattered across the country, but the way I learned pretty much was I grabbed a bag of balloons and a book on how to do poodles and other animals like that. And after learning those, I just took the twist from that and I just turned them into other items. So you go around to different restaurants, parties and that sort of thing and entertain the children with it? Uh, birthday parties, corporate events, and right now I'm mainly at Casa Bonita. I really enjoy it here. Yeah. It's a very and nice atmosphere. Kids, so. Yes. Yeah, great. Now let's talk about the hat you're wearing here. All right. <laughs> Okay, it's a red and white hat. Let's, how long did it take you to do this? These take anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour, just depending on the style. Okay, and is there a certain type of balloon that you use when you do your artwork? I use the Qualtex. They're a much stronger balloon. You don't normally see these like in the grocery stores or anything. And I special order them from a company down in Texas. Okay, and they're like the tube, right? The tube type mm -hmm. balloons. How do you know Oh, I guess the question would be, I mean, with each type of thing, you put a certain amount of air into the balloon, right? Or do you right. put the same amount every time? No, you put different amounts because as you twist the balloon, it forces more air down. And if you put a, if you filled this one all the way up, twisted it five times, it would pop. Right. So there's sort of a mathematical formula for each character. Wow, and how many balloons are in this? This one takes about 20 if nothing pops during the process of making it. Great, and speaking of popping, I'm gonna get my hand at doing this pretty soon, but let's take a look and uh, how you do this sort of thing. All right. I'll start off with just your basic balloon. This is a 260Q. Okay. The two stands for two inch diameter and the 60 stands for 60 inches in length. Okay. Now. Now you didn't blow it up all the way. Right. Okay. Have to leave some air down at the end. Let's tie it off. Now would you like to give it a try? I'm going to watch you first. All right. <laughs> now one of the first things you learn. Okay. Is just. Oh wow. You're doing this so quickly. Oh. Hello. Basic dog. That's the first thing, is it just a dog? And a lot of the animals are just a form of this. The giraffe, the mouse, you just make different body parts longer and shorter in proportion to whatever animal you're making. Man, how do you do that though? I mean, you have to twist or, you know, and figure out where the ears are gonna go. Where, is that just a... It's memorization and just knowing the formula for each one. Wow, this is great, look at the dog. Okay, let's see, I guess I can try to make one of these, huh? Oh no. 
Now, one thing most people will notice about the balloons. On the table. Here. Okay. Okay. Do I have to stretch it? Uh. That's one of the first things you notice. <laughs> is they're very difficult to blow up. These are very. Okay. You know what? Thick you blow it up. Balloon. I'll twist it. All right. Okay. Now, where do I twist? Oh, I'm afraid it's gonna pop. Now, the reason they're so thick, yeah. which makes them difficult to blow up, is so they can take so much abuse in the twisting. Okay. Let's start right uh, here. We'll do it easily. What you do first is you twist a piece for the nose. Okay. Do you, can you just go ahead and twist? Just twist it. Right there. Oh, gosh. I just know it's going to pop. It will okay. not pop. Okay. Now, hold that. If you let go, oh, it like will that? unravel. Okay. So you have to hold that in place at all times. Okay. I'm holding. And you twist off the next section for the ear. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. Little ear. And another one? Same size for the next ear. Okay, same size. Oh, I just know it's gonna pop. It will not pop. I give it a couple more twists. Okay. Now I hold well, it. Once. <laughs> okay. Hold okay, it like hold that. It. Hold it like so this. Those two are parallel. They're right. not quite the same size. That's nah, fine. And okay. you just pull out and you twist. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Oh, my one ear came undone. That Wait a minute. Sometimes. Let me try it again. No, oh, see, they're too small. Right. Okay, right. Okay. Okay, hold like this. And then twist those two together. And twist these two together. Twist it around a couple of times. Okay. I have one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have one of one ear. I'll give them another ear here real quick. Okay, yeah, please help me. Thank you. All right. And then you twist the piece to the neck. Now see, what happened when you lock those three together is it keeps yeah. them from unraveling like they do when oh. there's nothing else around it. I got you. Okay. Got the neck going. Neck. The feet. Two longer sized ones. Now you'll probably want to shorten that just a bit. Okay. Otherwise you'll have an extremely small body for good? your dog. That's good. Okay. Oh, Don't let go of that oh, piece. Oh, oh. Okay. I just twist one more section that size. Twist one more section that size. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a little bit bigger. Just try and get it in proportion if you can. Right there. That's good. Look at me go. Okay. okay. Now hold it back up and twist it just like you did with the ears. Like this one? Just like that. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Just twist it around a couple times. That's just... Okay. There's the front feet for your dog. Okay, there's my front feet for my dog. Okay. And you make a body. Make my body. How long is your body? Yeah, right about there. Oh, well now. I can't do You don't it. have to hold on there anymore. Oh, I don't? You sure? It's locked in place from the okay. three bubbles. Listen to me, he knows what he's doing, and I'm saying, are you sure? Okay. And then just make two more feet the same size as the front two. Two more feet the same size as the front two. Okay. What do I do now? Now you lock those together just like you did with the front. These like this? Mm-hmm. Whoops. It's coming undone. Okay now. Little cheater's method. You yeah. have that one lock there. Just grab there and twist. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now to get the fluffy tail, you have to blow a little more air in the tail. Now you know how to do that? No, no. Okay, just blow right there on the end. Oh, hello. <laughs> How'd you do that? Did you do that? A little bit of balloon magic. Okay. Or you can just Always deformed. It out. He's special. <laughs> Special. There you go. Ooh, I have a poodle. <laughs> oh, look at my dog and his poor ears. Woohoo. Okay, we're going to let you kind of work your magic here. All right. And uh, do some other things. Look at all the dogs. Woohoo. Okay, what are you going to show us next? Now, as you get a little bit further on into ballooning, So do you start out the same way, basically, in all of them? 
No, you use different twisting types. Okay, but I mean as far as blowing it, you don't ever blow it all the way, right? You do on a few pieces. Okay. I'll show you those later on. Okay. Use combinations of lock twists. Which is what? That's where you lock two sections of the balloon together to keep it from unraveling. There. Looks sort of like a little reindeer right now, but we're going to make it something <laughs> much cuter. Okay. Take it. You can use it to hold it in place. This is what's called an ear twist. Okay. That's where you take one section of the balloon and you lock it between two others like this. Now we have a little teddy bear. Oh, how cute. Now you can give them little arms. Man, you work so fast. Oh, that's adorable. So I bet that's a big request of the kids, isn't it? Teddy, Teddy bears. bears, especially with the little girls. Oh, yeah. Now, another fun thing to do with these. What are you doing here? Put a little flower. Now, I use what's called a tulip twist. That's where I take the balloon and I push it in on itself, uh -huh. grab, and twist. Now, it's running itself back through the balloon. I lock it in place at the bottom and push it up to where it's held in place. And let's just get it. Oh, you just work it through there? Now he's got a little flower. Oh! How adorable! Now see, there are some pieces where you do blow the balloon up all the way or almost. Oh, okay. I'll let you hold on to that for a second. Keep him right here. Oh, keep him here? Okay. A minute, if you would. You're going to add a, another little feature to him? Okay, this one, yeah, you blew up almost all the way. Yeah. I just make them a little bit soft sometimes, force the air down, and they don't pop quite as easily that way. Because a lot of people, after they get to looking at it, they think of it as art and they don't remember it's a balloon. Right. And balloons do pop when you push them a little too far. And once you learn some of the basic characters, you can start adding them to different things. Okay, you're undoing the teddy bear here. Yeah. How adorable. Now he's hugging the, the heart. Right. And you just add and combine different techniques and animals and twists to come up with different things. So tell me, when you first started this, how many balloons did you go through as far as popping them? <laughs> oh, several hundred. And <laughs> I can imagine. Now I go through several thousand a week. Look at that. OK. What else you have for us? Oh, wow. You have a handful of balloons now. What are you going to do? OK. Now, instead of just adding one piece to another, I'm going to combine a bunch of balloons to make one giant character. Okay. If you'd hold on to those for I me. I can do that. And I'm not going to ask you what character. We're just going to guess when you're done what it is. reason I'm good at this. I'm full of hot air. <laughs> yeah, what's so nice too is you're using color to really make the character and not just all one color. You know, I mean, you really try to personalize it, don't you? I use Sharpies a little bit also to give them a little bit more character. But I try to use just balloons by themselves just as much okay, as possible. Okay, tell me why you just did what you did. You just broke the balloon. I broke the balloon. That's because I didn't need that extra piece. 
Okay. And I just break them off with my hands. It's much easier than having to fool around with a pair of scissors. And so what you did was just wrap that end piece around so it blocked the air from losing any air, I guess, the well, balloon, I, right? I just quickly jabbed it with my thumb. Ah. You learn a few things working with balloons for as long as I have. This looks like teeth or something. I'm getting it, aren't I? <laughs> there he goes again, breaking those balloons. Red. Okay. the balloon just a little. No. Oh, you're almost tying those together, aren't you, with that one? I wrapped it around, locked it in place, and now just sort of intertwining it. There's almost countless different twisting techniques, like the lock twist, the ear twist. And on the hat, I used the weaving technique. Now you said this is just like practice. You just experiment with it. But is there a book or anything that tells you, like you're, you're naming some certain types of weaves and that sort of thing? Are, are those technical terms? That's just what they're generally required referred to by the twisting community. Oh, okay. The twisting community. Mm. We refer to it as pop art sometimes. <laughs> One more. There's only one problem with twisting. What's that? Well, I end up trying to make these beautiful things for the children, and they end up all twisted. <laughs> the children, not the balloons. Yeah. You know, I can already guess what this is. Well, he's a rather devilish character. Yes, he is. I have a whole loony ensemble that I do. <laughs> Just bend them to give them a little more character. And let's see here. Use my Sharpie to give them some eyes. We're gonna let uh, our viewers guess what it is. But as you gave them a hint, he is quite a devilish character. Just giving him some eyes there. Voila! Look at here. Isn't that incredible? I love it! Okay, continue, Mr. Dustin. That bag really helps me a lot. Oh, I bet it does. Now, is that your own creation there? Uh, it's just an apron with added pockets. There's about 20 pockets on there. When I first started out, I bought the balloons in assorted packs. It'd come with the blues and greens and everything all mixed together in one bag. 
And the problem with that is, in darker lights, the greens and blues, purples and blacks, they all look the look same. Look alike, yeah. And buying them in the gross packages, individual color, I could sort them out more, much more easily, just line them up, toss them in my bag. Saved me a lot of time, and buying them in quantity also saved me money. Oh, I bet, yeah. I bet it doesn't feel too good on the back by the end of the day, though, right? <laughs> well, I usually carry a few thousand balloons on me, and with my pens and markers and cards and my spare lungs. <laughs> it ends up being a little bit heavy. Yeah. So has there ever been a character that uh, a child has asked for that you said, oh gosh, I can't do that, or? Well, a lot of the time I'm limited by just time. There's so many children here. Yeah. And if I make them, you know, each something that takes 10 to 30 minutes, then a lot of kids wouldn't get a balloon. So I just try to make them something fancy, like the teddy bear on a cart or a silly hat. So simple and quick, that way all the children get something? Well, I try to make it fanciful also. Yeah. Like the teddy bear on a heart instead of just a basic dog. Yeah. I like them each to have something that they've never had before. Have they ever asked you for something that you sat and thought about and went home and thought, hmm, that's a good challenge for me. Let me try that. That's how I come up with a lot of my characters. I have requests for something because of an event that's in town or just children asking for it, a popular TV character. And as we know, children love cartoons, huh? Oh. <laughs> I like them quite a bit also. Uh, it gives me a good excuse to go home and watch them. Right. <laughs> Call it research. <laughs> He's getting there, just yes, one more balloon. Is. Oh, got a hole in that one. Yeah, not all the balloons are good. But. Oh, I get the trash. <laughs> That's what I get for being the assistant today, right? Well, you're expected to make some for the children after this, of course. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> A deformed dog. Not quite. You'd hold on to that piece. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. You can lock them in place a lot of times just with the twists and break them. Yeah, I can tell. little white stripe down the middle. He should be becoming a little more apparent now. And of course, the final touch. So can we say, what's up, Doc? <laughs> oh, Bugsy character. Look at that. That is amazing. Give him some eyes and whiskers. <laughs> so, Dustin, after you give these characters to the children, about how long do they last? 
Uh, most of them stay looking good between one and two weeks, just as a good estimate. So that's good then. I mean, that's really good. The only thing I worry about is some of the parents see these, and again, they don't think of them as balloons. They give them to their smaller children, and I have to warn them to watch it around their children's mouth. Right. Because unfortunately, they are a choking hazard to very small children. Look at that, how incredible. He's so real. We'll put him on the table with the rest of our things. Is there anything else that you could do real quickly? Sure. Okay. Put him on the table with the rest. Okay, got this one. Now we will uh, let the folks know once again, we are at Casa Bonita. So that's why we have Macarena and all that playing in the background. <laughs> Mariachis here are a lot of fun. It just adds to the environment. Right, right. That's part of why I like working here so much. Okay, Dustin, you do have me confused on this. It takes a little bit more to see this one, have to get it fully twisted, but once it's done, I'm pretty sure you'll recognize it. I think that's part of the fun, is trying to guess what it is. Right. Once again, he just ties it off. Justin, we're going to show everyone all the characters that you've made so far in today's show. You're very incredible, very talented. And tell us what you have here. I made this one especially for you. It's a little yellow canary since you've been such a sweetie. Oh, look at this. Isn't this adorable? Dustin, thank you so much for being on the program today. Thank you for having me. You are me. very, very talented. I can't do this. I'm too afraid of popping a balloon. <laughs> thank you again. We appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed seeing the talent of Dustin, and thank you for watching Expressions. We'll see you next week.